want to welcome all of His Glory Nation from east to west to north to south for today's Sunday service. Today is the 1st of November. Happy November. We are two days before the election, the, great, the, the biggest election of our lifetime. Uh, this is the 14th of Chess Van, the year 5781. We're going to start in Luke 12, 2, because this is justice coming. For there is nothing covered that will not be revealed, nor hidden that will not be known. And that is God's judge, judgment coming to uh, the world. We're going to start off before we turn it over to Vicki about uh, a letter that the Archbishop of Agano sent to President Trump on the 25th of November. If you remember, uh, our 25th of October, he sent one in May too. He wrote uh, President Trump a letter warning that 319 packet pandemic was going to be used to usher in a world government, stripping people of their freedoms. In a letter in June, he encouraged Trump in his fight against the deep state. He's known as the Vatican's whistleblower, helping ex uh, expose in 2012 the financial corruption scandal in the Holy See and accusing Pope Francis and other church leaders in 2018 letter of covering up sexual abuse allegations against former Cardinal Theodore McCarrick. In his latest mass uh, missive to Trump, October 25th, he warned the president that the civil and religious authorities are ignoring their peril, the Great Reset which is already being implemented in some nation. Allow me to address you at this hour in which the fate of the whole world is being threatened by a, a global conspiracy against God and humanity, Vagato began. I write to you as an archbishop bishop, and su successor of the apostles and a former apostolic nuncio to the United States of America. I'm writing to you in the midst of, a silent, of the silence of both civil and and religious authorities. May you accept these words of mine as the voice of one crying out in the desert, John 1, The archbishop said it's a historic moment in which the forces of evil are aligned in battle without quarter against the forces of good. He cited it attacks against the very basis of society, the natural family, respect for human life, the love of country, freedom of education, and business. We see the heads of nations and religious leaders pandering to the suicide of Western culture and its Christian soul. While the found, fundamental rights of citizens and believers are denied in the name of health emergency that is revealing itself more and more fully instrumental to the establishment of an inhumane, faceless tyranny, Vagano wrote. He warned that the Great Reset is already underway. The, arch, the architect is a global elite that wants to subdue all the, of humanity, imposing co coercive measures which, uh, with which to drastically limit, limit individual freedoms and those of entire populations, he said. Uh, he wrote that the 319 lockdowns may be gradually easing, but anxiety about the world's social and economical prospects is only intensify, intensifying. Warning a sharp economic downturn has already begun and we could face the worst depression since the 1930s. To, 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 to achieve a better outcome, the world must act jointly and swiftly to revamp all of, uh, aspects of our society and economics, for education to social contracts and working conditions, Klaus said. Every country from the United States to China must participate in, the, in every industry from oil and gas tech must be transformed. In short, we need a great reset of capitalism. The United States, however, has achieved a V-shaped in gross domestic product promised by Tre President Trump uh, with a 33.1% GDP increase in the third quarter, an annualized rate of a 32.8% uh, dive in the second. Tempting promises come with price. Vagano warned that the Great Reset plan is deceptive, hidden behind uh, tempting promises of ensuring a universal income and canceling individual debt. The price of these concessions for the uh, International Monetary Fund will be the re renunciation of pri uh, private property and adherence to a program of V, uh, v option against 319 and 321 promoted by Bill Gates with the collaboration of a main pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical groups, he wrote. The Great Reset, he noted, will impose health passports, verifying who has been uh, V'd and digital ID to track people, punishing anyone who doesn't cooperate. Mr. President, I, ima I, I imagine that you are already aware that, these, the, in the, that in some countries, 
The Great Reset will be activated be between the end of this year and the first trimester of 2021, wrote the Archbishop. For this purpose, further lockdowns are planned, which will be officially justified by a supposed second and third wave of pa pandemic. You are well aware of what this means and that have been deployed to sow panic and, and uh, legitimize draconian limitations of individual liberties, artfully provoking a worldwide economic crisis. And the intentions of an ar uh, the architects, this crisis will serve to make the recourse of the nations to the Great Reset irreversible, uh, therefore giving the final blow to a world whose existence and very memory they don't want to completely can cancel. In contrast, the world, Vingano said, is filled with people, affectioned institutions, faith, culture, traditions, and ideals. People and values that do not act like uh, uh, automa automations, who do not obey like machines, because they are endowed with a soul and a heart, because they are tied together by a spiritual bond that draws its strength from above, from the God that our adversaries want to challenge. Just as Lucifer did at the beginning of time with the non surveyum Vangado said that until a few months ago, it was easy to smear, smear as conspiracy theories those who denounced these terrible plans, which we now see being carried out to the smallest detail. Among those who support the globalist uh, aims, he said, is Pope Francis. And it's now clear that one who occupies the chair of Peter has betrayed his role from the beginning in order to defend and promote the globalist ideology, supporting the agenda of the deep church. Who's, who's cho who choose him from its ranks, the Archbishop said. Vangano told Trump that, it's ad uh, that his adversary uh, is also our adversary, uh, referring to Satan, uh, adversary. Around you are gathered with faith and courage at those you consider the final garrison against the world dictatorship, he wrote. The, alter the alternative is to vote for a, a person who is manipulated by the deep state, gravely compromised by scandals and corruption who will do the United States the, the, the Gorge uh, uh, Moreo Bergoglio, Pope Francis, is doing to the church. Prime Minister Conti to Italy, uh, President Macron to France, Prime Minister Sanchez to uh, Spain, and so on. He said in the blackmailable nature of Joe Biden, just like the, the prelates of the Vatican ma uh, magic circle, will expose him to, to be used unscrupulous, allowing illegitimate powers to interfere in both domestic politics as well as international balances. It is obvious that those who manipulate him already have someone worse than him ready, with whom they will replace him as soon as the opportunity arises. He said, apparently referring to Vice President nominee Kamala Harris. But there is hope, Bengano uh, maintained, and the Great Reset is destined to fall, fail because those who had planned it did not understand that there are still ready, there are still people ready to take the streets to defend their rights and protect their loved ones and to give a future to their children and their grandchildren. The leveling, the leveling inhumanity of the globalist project will shatter miserably in the face of the firm and courageous opposition of the children of light. He said the enemy has Satan on its side. He who only knows how to hate. But on our side, we have the Lord God Almighty, the God of the armies arrayed for battle and the most holy virgin who will crush the head of the ancient servant. If God is for us, who can be against us? Romans 8, 31. He closed with a pastoral charge to Trump. Mr. President, you are well aware that in this crucial hour, the United States of America is considered the defending wall against which the war declared by the advocates of globalism has been unleashed, he wrote. Place your trust in the Lord, strengthened by the words of the Apostle Paul. I can do all things in him who strengthened me, Philippians 4.13. To be an instrument of divine providence in a great, is a great responsibility for which you certainly receive all the graces of the state that you need, since they are being fervently implored for you by the many people who support you with their prayers. Pray, 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 pray. This is the most important election of a lifetime. This is truly, literally, light versus dark and light wins. We're going to turn it over to Vicki and our opening prayer. God bless you. Welcome, His Glory family. Please join with me in agreement in prayer. Father God, thank you for another day to breathe you in. From Psalm 8318, we declare that you alone are called the Lord. You alone are the Most High, supreme over all the earth. That is who you are. We pour out 
our gratitude and praise to you and you alone. We come to adore the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. O Lord of God of heaven's armies, we call upon your name. You are the great I am. We know you are on our side and we know that you are sure to save. Reign your glory upon us. Cleanse us from our sins, the sins of our families and our nations. Wash us clean with the blood of your son, Jesus, as we repent and choose him and believe that he took our place on the cross and rose again on the third day to conquer sin and death. We give all praise, honor, and glory to you. Knowing that your word says in Zechariah 4, 6 that it is not by force nor by strength, but by my spirit, says the Lord of heaven's armies. <clears throat> we choose to be still and know that you are God and you are in control. We will watch and pray and trust that you will cause the giants to fall. We don't want to be unbelieving like the Israelites were after you delivered them from Egypt. We want to believe even if we can't see. We want to honor you for giving us almost four years now of victory against the plans of the enemy in our country. Surely you did that. We thank you for President Trump, First Lady Melania, their family, staff, and administration, and continue to pray <clears throat> for their protection. We trust that what you have started, you will be faithful to complete. Glorify yourself with this next victory, Lord. Bless us and the world with this victory. We declare the victory now and believe that you have ordained it so. <clears throat> for the glory of your name, O Lord, save this nation created by you. We love how precise and accurate your living word is for all of our situations and how you lead us to what we need to know. We declare Psalm 75 right now for our nation, which says, <clears throat> we thank you, Lord, God, our God. We give thanks because you are near. People everywhere tell of your wonderful deeds. God says, at the time I have planned, I will bring justice against the wicked. When the earthquakes and its people live in turmoil, I am the one who keeps its foundations firm. I warned the proud, stop your boasting. I told the wicked, don't raise your fists. Don't raise your fists in defiance at the heavens or speak with such arrogance. For no one on earth, from east or west, or even from the wilderness, should raise a defiant fist. It is God alone who judges. He decides who will rise and who will fall. For the Lord holds a cup in his hand that is full of foaming wine mixed with spices. He pours out the wine in judgment and all the wicked must drink it, draining it to the dregs. But as for me, I will always proclaim what God has done. I will sing praises to the God of Jacob. For God says, I will break the strength of the wicked, but I will increase the power of the godly. Break the strength of the wicked, Lord. And increase the power of your people now. We know that your word says in John 16, 33, that here on earth you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart because I have overcome the world. We believe that you have overcome the world. Therefore, we do not agree with the corruption that is rampant. We proclaim your justice and righteousness to rule and reign. We trust that you will protect our communities, our families, our country, and all nations. And we know that you want your people to prosper. So we declare that your hand of blessing is real, true, and effectively causing our work to succeed. Annihilate each and every plan of the enemy to cause unrest in our nation and the world as this election unfolds. Cause all of their rituals, sacrifices, and curses to be powerless and ineffective. Break off the chains from your people and our country. Let the sound of the chains hitting the ground cause a wave of revival to flood the earth. Wake up, sleeper. Rise up, harvesters. Holy Spirit, come. Rest upon us today. 
Bless and protect the Scarlets and the ministry and broadcasts of his glory. Speak your word of hope to us today through your servants and let the sound of worship glorify you. Jesus, in your precious name we pray. Amen. Good morning, Miss Lori family. I'm happy to join uh, Dave and Christine and Cree and being a part of their Sunday service. I was in prayer and I was asking the Lord, well, Lord, what would you, what would you have me do um, every Sunday? And he gave me the title, Nuggets from the Lord. And I immediately knew what he was talking about. As, as you get deep into scripture, the Lord reveals more and more to you. Or if you're in a deep prayer and you're listening to his voice, he will reveal hidden treasures. Jeremiah 33, 3 says, Call to me and I will answer you and show you great and unsearchable things that you do not know. And Isaiah 28.10 says, Precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little, there a little. So he is revealing these nuggets. So I'd like to share with you the nugget he gave me one day as I was into prayer. As I was praying, he gave me the words, Every prayer is a love gift to the Father. And that just touched my heart, knowing that every time we pray, we are giving love to the Father. I've had many people say, well, I'm not a prayer. Let the prayer warriors do it. But the truth is, God wants everyone to pray. That is an intimacy that you have with God. And it doesn't have to be long or complex, or it can be simple as a child. It's just like a walking through the woods on an autumn day, and you see the brilliant color and you just look up and say, thank you, God, for your creation. Those are moments that really bring joy to the Father's heart. So I encourage you to take time when you have those moments. Lift up a quick prayer to the to Lord and bless his heart. So blessings to all of you. Bless each and every one of you. God bless. Good morning, His Glory family. I'm Prophets. The writings and prophets tell the story of the last two sections of the Old Testament. Before the Promised Land, the Pentateuch. In the Promised Land, the historical books. Kicked out of the Promised Land, the exile. Back to the Promised Land, the Israelites return home. In the historical books, God was faithful when His people were not. God had made a covenant or agreement that said if the people turn away from God, he would kick them out of the promised land. God's people broke the covenant for 490 years before he finally decided he had to do something. God didn't want to punish his people, but it was the only way to bring them back to him. The prophet said if the people would repent and turn back to God, he would bring them and give them a whole new covenant. A covenant that could keep because a God could because God himself would live in their hearts and change them from inside out. Just like the Pentateuch in the historical books, the writings and prophets point to. Jesus is the only way to fix our broken relationship with God in the writings and prophets. When the Psalms spoke of a Messiah who died for our sins, that was Jesus. When Isaiah declared that a new king would arise from the family of David, that was Jesus. When Isaiah prophesied about a Messiah who would live as a servant and suffer and die for the sins of the people, that was Jesus. And now we're gonna go to praise music. We'd like to welcome you to His Glory Worship. We're thankful to be here today to be able to lift up praise and worship to our Lord and Savior. And uh, we have many reasons to lift him up in worship, and we just thank you for this opportunity, Lord. His holy name Sing like never before Oh my soul I'll worship, worship Him 
Gracious and compassionate. Oh, the Lord is gracious and compassionate.
Oh, the Lord is gracious and compassionate. Slow to anger and rich in love. And the Lord is good to all. He has compassion. wrote this really beautiful song and I turned it into three papers so it's all my fault but it's a really beautiful song there's one thing that I would like to know what makes you lift me up when I'm feeling low? Why do you do the things you do? After all these years with you, why does this feeling seem to go? I'd like to know. Why did you feel the need to cry that day? When you hear the news your father passed away Why let us feel such pain What's there for us to gain Why did you feel the need to pray When you cried that day We can hear the seasons change And feel the rising 
rising sun We can see clouds rearrange And smell the river run Tell me where does love come from? And his son is Jesus Christ. Thank you for that praise music. Uh, we're going to be in Hebrews 3. We're kind of throwing it off a little bit today. Uh, as Tuesday, we will be in Miami. Uh, so we will not be doing a simple as a child in our Bible study. So we kind of threw this out of order a little bit. But the Hebrews 3 has been put on my heart for the message today. Last night, we had a blue moon. It was called a hunter's moon. First time since 1944 that we had such a hunter's moon. And I felt the Spirit of the Lord have me go out across our property and blow out the shofar all around our property. And I went out in the field, open field, and just watched this, this hunter's moon and prayed in the Spirit. And I felt the Spirit of the Lord. You could tell there was a major, major, and there is continuing a major battle in our spiritual realm. That's why we have to blow the shofar. That's why we have to be anointed in the Spirit of the Lord. It is so important. We are at a spiritual uh, war. We are at a precipice and we have to continue. We have to break, break through. Light winds, but we have to do our part. We have to blow the shofar. We have to cease and continue to pray and pray and pray. Tomorrow we will be having uh, Jonah Ritter on and then also we'll be doing our live prayer and blowing of the shofar. So important. Blowing the shofar, shaking as I have the shofar in front of me. There's nothing like hearing the shofar being blown. All right, let's get into the Son was faithful in Hebrews 3. Hebrews 3, therefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the, apostle, consider the apostle and the high priest of our confession, Christ Jesus. He is our high priest, who was faithful to him who appointed him, as Moses was also faithful in, the house, in, in all the house. Remember the Jewish faithful. He was just, this is the book of Hebrews showing you the Old Testament. Old Testament. The Jewish people are familiar with how Moses delivered them out of 40 years, uh, 40, 40 years of captivity in the wilderness and taking them out of Egypt. They looked at Moses as a prophet. He is the one that wrote the God breathed through the, the, the five books of, of the Torah. But there's one greater, and that is the Christ. And that's what the, the, the writer of Hebrews is talking about. That's when Jesus says, before Abraham, I am. He was faithful to appointed as Moses was faithful in all his house. It took Moses to be humility, being faithful. Remember, he had it all, and he left Pharaoh's house to, to call on, uh, to, to answer the call of the Most High God. He gave it all up to wander in the desert and bring the children out of a, a captivity when he could have lived in luxury, but he chose to follow the Most High God. For this one has been counted worthy of more glory than Moses. That one is Christ. 
And as much as he who has built the house has more honor than the house. He who built the house has more honor than the house itself. Remember when David was going to build a house for the Lord. He can't, the, 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 there's no house that can contain the Lord. For every house is built by someone, but he who built all things is God. It's talking about a house being built. It could be a church. I read an article yesterday about mega churches. Mega churches growing, 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 diversifying, doing this, staying out of, of, of words that may be controversial. That's not what the, the Lord told us to do. He didn't say build a big house and make it a mega house. We are called to be a tabernacle that moves with him. The church has left the building. We have to stand up at the pulpit and tell truth, and not only truth will set us free. There's been too many that had itchy ears just to get people to come in, come in, come in. Pretty music. Bring them in, bring them in. Tell them they want to hear, but I'm not going to touch the controversial subject. Oh, politics. No, 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 no. Many say you can't mix politics with religion. Jesus did, and aren't we called to be a light of Jesus? People don't want to stand up for the truth in this day and age. And the truth is the only thing that can set you free, and that truth is through our Messiah, Jesus Christ. Even the Jewish people are looking for one greater than Moses because they know the Torah, who Moses was talking about, the Messiah in the line of David. And Moses indeed was faithful in all his house as a servant. That's what we all have to be called, servants. We are not Moses, the one that walked with God at Mount Sinai. We are not Paul, the great apostle. We are not these saints that are put up on pedestals. We are called servants. We choose to serve because it's him that gets the glory. We deflect the glory for him. It's not a glory about us. For a testimony of those things which would be spoken afterward. But Christ his son, uh, before we get into th- uh, 3 6, 3 5 is, is quoting uh, Moses in Exodus 14 31. And when the Israelites saw that the great power of the Lord displayed against the Egyptians, the people feared the Lord and put their trust in him and in Moses his servant. When they saw this in trouble, they put their trust in the living God, they put their trust in Jehovah and Moses the servant. They, know Mo- they knew Moses the servant would deliver them. Parting the Red Sea, but as Christ is our son over his, own, but Christ as a son over his own house, God the Father put Christ as the son over his own house, literal house. Remember, Jesus said, "I go away to put a, to to put a house for my a, a house in my Father's house in my Father's many mansion." Whose house were we if we hold fast the confidence and rejoicing of the hope firm to the end? Hold fast. That means. Toe the line. Hold fast. It is going to be a battle. It is going to be a war. And through these trials and tribulations, what do we get? The confidence. The confidence of what? Ourselves? No. The confidence of him. And the rejoicing of hope firm to the end. We know that rejoicing of hope is coming. We can feel it. It's close. The Lord said to me the other day, I think I said this when Jim Stockstill was on. The Lord says, you know, there's been a lot of battles. But he said, you know what, my son? Joy is coming. Joy is coming to the faithful remnant. Joy is coming and joy will break out. This will be the greatest outpouring of the Holy Spirit all over the world. And here it comes. Be faithful. Hebrews 3, 7. Therefore, listen to what the Holy Spirit says. Today, if you hear his voice, do you hear his voice? Many people say, I never hear the voice of God. You have to get into his word. The more you get into his word with your heart and you get in the quiet places and listen, You'll hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. Do not harden your heart as it is a rebellion in the day of trial in the wilderness. When you're going through that trial in the wilderness, do not harden your heart. You have two choices to make. Double down, harden your heart, or take the scales off your heart and meet, meet the Lord in the heart. Where your father tested me, tried me, and saw my works for 40 years. 40 years is a wilderness period. We all go through a wilderness period in our life. The question is, during this wilderness period, will you learn to give up self for his purpose and his glory and let him walk with you? Or will you be stubborn and double down with a hardened heart and try to kick against the goads? It's not going to work out very well. That's why we're being tested always. Therefore, I was angry with that generation because they hardened their heart. They complained and said they always go astray in their heart. See, God is always looking at the condition of the heart. And once we accept him, and walk in him in our heart. And we sin against him because we will continue to sin. He's looking at our heart. When we ask for forgiveness and repentance, 
he clears the slate. As he said to David, I see no more sins in David. We know David in the Bible is one of the biggest sinners of all the Bible. That's what the, makes the Bible such a beautiful, beautiful truth, is that we are all fallen. Look at every Look at Moses. Moses killed a man. But the, the Lord sees the heart, and he knows that when we repent, it's cleansed. It's blotted out. He sees the sin no more. What a great God that is. Therefore, I was angry with this generation and said they go easily, easily astray in their heart, and they have not known my ways. Because they're doing it for themselves. Satan is distracted, delayed, and tried to get us off course. We have to follow the heart to the Most High God. This is a tipping point for the United States and the world. I have not, they have not known my ways. So I swore in my wrath. There is a wrath of the Lord. You have to fear the Lord. He is a loving, patient, holy God. But also, after doubling and tripling and quadrupling down, there is justice. And there is fear. And there is shaking. So I swore in my wrath that shall not enter my rest. Beware, brethren, lest there be any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. Unbelief departing for the, from the living God. But exhort one another daily while it's called today. Remember Satan's favorite day of the week is tomorrow. Because he, he, Satan's always saying, well, you can get right with Christ tomorrow. You can find God tomorrow. Tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. Not today. We have to do it today. You have to ask Jesus Christ to come in your heart today. There may not be a tomorrow. Tomorrow is never given. That's why Satan keeps saying tomorrow. We have to ask Christ to come in our life today. Lord, I repent of my sins. I call you Lord of my life. Forgive me of my sins, past, present, and future. And I ask you to come into my heart and be Lord, and I'll follow your precepts and commandments. That starts the walk. If you said that prayer, in your heart, it has been circumcised. But exhort one daily today, lest any of you are hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Deceitfulness of sin. It's crouching. It's creeping. And there's only one way out of this sin nature. If the law were able to do it, we would be able to do it. But the law couldn't do it. So we have to have a Savior, and that is our Christ. For if we become partakers of Christ in the hold of the beginning of our confidence, steadfast to the end. We become partakers of Christ we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the end. Steadfast in him to the end. Confidence. He's got it. He's got it. We trust him. While, uh, while it is said, today if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion. That's verse 15. Uh, verse uh, 11 was Psalm 95, 7, 11. And God made this so important of this verse that he said it twice. He set it up in Hebrews 11, and he said it in Hebrews 15 again. And that is Psalm 95, 7, and 11. Failure of the wilderness wanders. For who, having heard, rebelled? Indeed, was it not all who came out of Egypt, led by Moses? Now with whom was he angry 40 years? Was it not with those who sinned, whose corpse fell in the wilderness? And to whom did he swear <clears throat> that he would not enter in his rest but those who did not obey? <clears throat> so all he's asking for is our heart. Do you love me? Then you'll trust me. Do you love me? Then you'll follow my precepts and commandments. If you love me, you know I'm the God of the universe. I know the beginning. I know the end. I'm the Alpha, the Omega. I'm omnipresent. I know the beginning. I know all things. You just have to trust me, my son, my daughter. Follow me and trust me. Do you follow him and trust him? Every single moment of your life. We all fall short of that. That's why we got to get back in the word of God. That's why we got to seek him with all our heart, our soul, and our mind in praying and meditation because he will show us the way. The word of God sustains us like the manna did to the children of Israel. And verse 16 was showing Numbers 14, 2. Verse 17 was Psalm 106, 2. Verse 18 is Numbers 40 through 23, 20 through 23. And to whom did he swear that we would not enter his rest but those who did not obey? If you love the Lord Jesus Christ, you will obey. I hear so many Christians today. I love Jesus. I'm a Christian. But this word of God, nah, you know what? I don't agree with this. I don't agree with that. I don't want to do this. I'll take this portion of the Bible, but I don't want the rest. It's not, it's, 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 it's not a la carte. This is his entire word, all 66 books by 40 authors. An integrated message system that is him telling us the blueprint, the compass of our life. He wants a compass to be embedded inside a holy of holies, our heart, 
The answer to every question we have, trial and tribulation of the world, is in his word. But we can't pick and choose. And we have to be obedient to what? All his word, as Paul says in 2 Timothy 3.16. Uh, 3, all scripture, not some scripture, not what scripture we like, not what scripture we don't like, but all scripture is God-breathed as the five books of Moses. The Torah were breathed into Moses. All scripture is God-breathed for his edification, for our edification and our teaching. We need it all. We need to sustain. That's why the, Old, the New Testament is revealing the Old Testament and vice versa. So we see that they could not enter because of unbelief. You cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven if you do not have unbelief. We have to open the scales of our heart. you got to do the heart before the eyes. Remember the Lord Jesus Christ was asked, what is the greatest commandment? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, and your mind. Jesus went on further and said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, your mind, and your strength in the gospel. You notice it's in order? There's no coincidence with that. To love the Lord your God with all, it has to start with your heart. It starts in the Holy of Holies. And when you accept him in your heart, he is in you. He is the tablet of the heart. He meets you in the Holy of Holies. Then it becomes your essence. Then it is your soul. It is your DNA. Your DNA changes. You become a new person. Scientists believe that the DNA molecule actually changes when a believer becomes born again because in the heart has now come to the soul. And then it goes to your mind. It can't be to the mind. That's the problem with religion. Religion is of the mind. God doesn't want a religion. He wants a relationship. You don't have a relationship in the mind. You have a relationship in the heart. That's why it's the heart, the soul, then the mind. And then Jesus takes it a step further. He says, it's your strength and all your strength, meaning walk with him and trust him to carry you all the way. We pray that Hebrews 3 has been a blessing to you. And may the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob bless you. We'll be right back for the closing prayer. God bless. We'd like to thank you for watching and supporting His Glory TV because your support allows us to spread the Word of God to all nations from east to west to north to south. Our mission has always been bringing the Word of His Glory to the world, but we can't do this without you. Your support allows us to do so many wonderful things in the name of Christ, like supporting the orphans in Kenya, providing them with food, with milk from Glory the Cow, and a well to provide fresh water. Your continued support allows us to do the most important thing, and that is spreading the word of Christ to all nations for free. For any donations, you can go to www.hisglory.me. You can make a one-time or reoccurring donation. That allows us to plan ahead. And you can also send in a check or money order to our PO box. And also there's merchandise available for purchase. All your donations are 100% tax deductible. Thank you and God bless you. Dear Lord, thank you for this great day, keeping us all safe, happy and healthy. And Lord, thank you so much for everything that you've done for us and that you keep us safe from the coronavirus also. And Lord, thank you so much for loving us and that we can give back and do the Sunday service for you, Lord. Amen. We pray over this nation, Lord, that we are coming into the most important election of all of our lifetime. We pray that the light of Christ will shine on each and every person that goes to those polling stations to vote for your precepts and your commandments. The revival and everything is at stake, but we know, we know, we know by your scripture that you got this, Lord, and light wins, but we must participate. We have to participate in what you are doing. We need to blow the shofar and participate in what you're doing. May the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob bless each and every one of you all over his glory nation. God bless you and go in his shalom. God bless you.